I could just. Oh, geez. Okay. Oh, no, not that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just want to say I love you so much. Um, I love you too. Sister. Douglas, thank you so much for taking this time to be with me and to talk about our dear friend, Chief Golden Light Eagle. Oh, my brother. Yes. For um, many lifetimes. I wanted to um, maybe just pray us in. And then oh, sure. Do, do your thing. You tell us. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll take a nice deep breath. Anybody who's watching, take a nice deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men, let light return to earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men and women. May the Christ consciousness return to earth in the center where the will of God is known. Let the center guide the little wills of men and women, the center which the masters know and serve, and may it seal the door where darkness, doubt, disease, and duality dwell. <laughs> may the plan of love, light, and power restore heaven on earth. Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, Father Sky, Mother Earth, from the point of light that connects both of us, please be here in the sacred circle of light. Allow us to be a clear channel for Chief Golden Light Eagle, humanity, Mother Gaia, the ancestors, the star beings, all of the kingdoms. Amen and amen. 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 Beautiful sister. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Blessings be and so it is and whatever else you want to say. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put this on, let's see, uh, on the speaker. Okay then I would like you to just tell me, first of all, how you met the chief and basically what he stood for. Well, first thing, what he stood for, of course, was love, connection, peace, and assisting people on moving forward on their paths. <clears throat> how I met chief was uh, when I went through my own spiritual awakening and I'm going to say some people aren't really aware that there's a difference between being a spiritual person on a path versus the actual spiritual awakening when everything comes in full force of well, then you're like, well, what's going on? You know, what just happened? So anyway, so when I first went through mine, I was doing a lot of research, you know, about the universe, about the star beings, about native ways about rays of energy it was, everything was just flooding in and i'm like on my computer like and i'm not tech savvy by any means i'm smart enough but so he showed up when i started thinking about the stars and thinking about star people i'm like hmm i see he showed up as standing elk and so i'm like okay so i need to meet this guy so how do i go about that so with that being said, I, I lived in a small town in Nebraska, Osmond, Nebraska, where my awakening was quite, quite interesting. I did it by myself. And so I met this gentleman who had a couple of semi trucks and one of his drivers just happened to be Jimmy White. And I don't know if you know James White, but he lives on the Santee Res. He does UEP ceremonies, medicine man regular old people, but he was a truck driver for this older gentleman that I met. And so I started talking to him about studying his native ways. I said, just something I, I believe I need to touch base with again this time to, to get some answers that I'm looking for. And this seems to be the best route. So I met Jimmy and I started coming up to his house and doing sweats and learning the ways. And then I made my pipe, got my spirit name. And I'm, this whole time I'm like, Hey, I really need to meet this Lauren guy. He says, it'll happen. So we're sitting in Santee, Nebraska at a house ceremony. <clears throat> guy was doing a UEP. We're down in the basement and ceremony's done. And I kept throughout the whole time, you know, before it started. And then of course it's dark during ceremony. And when the light came back on, I see this gentleman sitting in the corner all by himself chewing on something. And I'm looking at it. He kept looking at me the whole time. And I'm like, who is this guy? He looks so familiar. And uh, so when we were all done, I said, Jimmy, I said, 
who's that guy in the corner who keeps staring at me, chewing on things? Well, he's chewing on sage. And I said, he said, that's Lauren. That's the guy you want to meet. I was like, stop it. So just like that. And that's where I met him. I got to meet him. And then I started uh, going up to his brother's house in Greenwood, where he would show up on occasion when he wasn't traveling. And we'd do sweat. And he'd always be like, hey, you know, you want to go have sweat? So we go down and we get it started, me and him. And uh, I entered the name. And you've heard it before. You probably haven't heard it in a while. Ugly girl. <laughs> I had to mention it because actually it was John, his brother, and him. Me and Jimmy had come up for sweat one day. And we were running a little bit behind. But, you know, we're never behind. It's Indian time. <laughs> so we pulled up in front of the sweat in the car. And they're like, hey, Jimmy, did you bring the ugly girl with you? And the name is stuck ever since, which is a Hayoka name because we're all clowns and it means beautiful man, what Lauren told me after. And so anyway, so that's how I met him in the house ceremony. And then our relationship grew a little bit more, a little bit more each time I saw him. And we would talk about the stars and we would talk about this path and spreading love and <clears throat> trying to incorporate, or not trying, but incorporating his ways with star ways. To bring people forward and uh then i traveled with him for a couple of months which is where i met you and a bunch of other people over in california and then we did that for two months me lauren sherwin now, you guys all call him chief to me he's chief but he's my brother from for a long time so i've always been he's always been lauren to me and no disrespect because i love him more than a friend or a chief you know He's, he's definitely part of my being. So I traveled around for a couple months and then a bunch of ceremonies, bunch of ceremonies, bunch of things happening, you know, just connecting people and spreading love and doing our thing. And we all have our little different ways of doing the same thing. And so then that, that ended, but I still would see him on occasion and, uh, Oh, I think it was a few months later, I was actually ready. I was, I was allowed, I'm going to say, by the universe to leave Nebraska and start my own travels. And the reason I say that is because I tried to leave previous to meeting Lauren and, and Jimmy and all them to start on this path. And they stopped me. And I won't get into that story because as humans, we're hard headed. And they had to go the extra mile to keep me in that state. And they did. And it worked out quite well. So when I was traveling on my own, Lauren had called me and said, hey, you want to go travel around again? And at the moment, I was in Colorado, a house sitting for a lady who moved, who went to Poland to visit for two months. And I was only a month in, so I could not. All right, well, you're doing your own thing. He says, but I said, we'll see each other again, brother. So I've been to a fair amount of Star Knowledge conferences since helping him spread the ways. And of course, the ugly girl always comes out. Um, it's like uh, our little joke, if you will. And I show up, do my thing. He's doing his thing. And then when that comes up, then it gets everybody to thinking, oh, these guys are about love and they're talking about ugly girls. And then when they see that it's me, I just tell them, I said, don't let the hair fool you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think the last time it was, I, I got the dates a little mixed up between Estes Park and Amicola Falls, where when we were in Estes Park, I was helping with the peace flag ceremony with Fumi, and he was, you know, like I said, doing his thing. So we, we passed each other's pass and said, hey, how you doing? Da, da, da. Talked for a little bit, ate some food, and I was sitting by the doorway, and he's like, I just want to say uh, hello to, to, my, to my brother, Ugly Girl. So over there by the door and I was like oh I says yeah I says I may be the ugly girl I said but do you know for sure I said have you ever seen me naked <laughs> and oh the whole the whole crowd just blew up laughing but that's that's the biggest part of this path it's it's not so much about the ways and how you do it they all work every one of them will work and we're all individuals we all come from different backgrounds but it's really about laughter and joy and fun and and that's what lauren's big thing was fun let's have fun no matter how it takes if you can make somebody laugh 
that's really the teaching, you know, to be in that space of a high vibration love, which is the highest vibration you can possibly get, or I should say have anywhere in the universe. There's nothing more powerful than creator source energy because that's what love is. The stuff we're all made of. So that's what Lauren was about. And because he came here this lifetime as a Native American and a chief, that was his, his avenue to teaching. So he was teaching good stuff. He's teaching about the stars. But really, at the end of the day, if you want to put it in a little ball, it's about love. So, I mean, I don't know how even better to explain that. So whatever way you choose, as long as you're doing it from your heart, you're doing it out of love. And that's who we are. That's who we've always been. Come down to 3D to experience being human. And, you know, sometimes it gets, uh, oh, let's say lessened, if you will, but not really lessened because, you know, it's just the vibration. That's the only difference, the vibration. So for what it is that I do in, rele in relevance to Lauren, we just spread love. And that's what I tell you. I spread love. I shine light. I give knowledge of the universe, which is pretty simple. Be love, you know, and keep that high vibration and don't let certain things get you down and don't hold on to emotions that lower your vibration. It's hard, but even if you experience them emotions like anger, fear, guilt, worry, just don't hold on to them. Acknowledge that they're there and say, well, yeah, that's no good for me. Let it go, which, of course, humanity has a really hard time with patience and letting go <laughs> but it's part of the path if you don't let go you can't move forward and it, well it's not you but well, you, you move slower i guess if you want to say it like that you can't stop your path but you can surely detain yourself until you understand that this is how it works you know so i teach that wherever i go and spirit's been directing me for well 10 years, but seven years since I've known Lauren. And I started my awakening like, geez, 18 years ago. And uh, took me a long time to start putting pieces together. And then now where I'm at to this day, and I move exactly like Lauren moved, wherever spirit takes you. And that was one of the things that was beautiful for me to see because I already knew that's how it worked. And I'm like, there's got to be more to it than that. And there's really not, you know, now, of course, he's traveled around for 25 years doing his thing. And so uh, he moved more fluidly, but I've noticed in the past four years that that same fluidity has been the same for me. So why wouldn't it work for everyone else? But there are, per there are certain things that you have to bring into your being that assist you with that ease and grace. Like, like my website. Okay. My website is my name. It's nothing special. I've been called many things. I've been many things, but right now I'm Douglas. So that's what my website is. But on my website, the main body of it is pure heart, pure intentions, faith, trust, and patience. You need no more than that. Do you have a pure heart and pure intentions and faith and trust that the universe will take care of you at any given moment, that everything is preordained and within reason? But yeah, nothing happens without your soul's approval, period. And then patience, of course, for them to work it out because free will puts a damper on everything. But it's a, le it's a learning. We just come here to experience being human and to learn certain lessons. And so what I get out of that is that we learn how to be the love that we are up there down here amongst all the chaos and all the other stuff that's going on. So we need to be responsible for our own human emotions, how we react to things. And we need to keep ourselves in check. We're also responsible for our happiness. We're responsible for everything about us. We can't rely on anybody else to make us happy or to we, know, we can only assist. So I, I say this, people are like, we need to save humanity. No, no, you're not saving humanity. You are assisting humanity in saving themselves. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. <clears throat> but if you're not taught that, then 
somebody needs to, hey, at least put the put the bell in there and ding a ling for you. So well, I, I just wanted to say that um, when I met the chief, I had bought his book. I was at a, um, a sweat lodge and I couldn't sweat that month because I was on my moon cycle. Right. And I had got this book, the book of symbols. Yep. And I got the book and I started reading a symbol every day. And then he told me that I could put the symbols into the earth. So I started building medicine wheels. Oh, and sure. I moved, I built a medicine wheel and I put his star symbols into the earth and I'd watch the energy shift. Like a palpable yeah. energy yeah. change yeah. in the Mother Earth. And also, too, he introduced the concept for me that the element water is a consciousness, that air is a consciousness, that everything our consciousness. Yeah. Everything is energy. Everything. Even your desk you're sitting at, that that bookshelf behind you, everything's energy. It vibrates at a different frequency. So it vibrates to the point where you don't see it move, but it still has energy and vibration. So um, with that being said, yeah, that's that's what it's all about. Everything is energy and your intentions are most important when you use. Them symbols, of course, came from the stars. Them symbols are actually a very good tool to use for humans to move themselves forward. And so they carry their own energy. And yeah, and that was his that was his way, what he was showing to show the people. And it was a beautiful way. And I, he was very adamant about it. I have to ask you, um, yesterday I found out that he crossed the Rainbow Bridge and and I had so many feelings about that. I felt, you know, of course happy for him because he did so much work here and what an incredible legacy that he lived. His life was love everywhere. Yep. And, and comedy, love and comedy, and music, the chief with the music and the comedy and the love. And then a part of me was like, how, how could that happen to him? And so oh, you were okay. telling me last night, you were so, telling me last night your opinion of that. And I'm I really to tell you, I'm gonna tell you, this is the other thing that I bring to people's attention. And I'm not sure if there's anybody else saying it, it doesn't really matter. I know I need to say it because it came to my attention and it's part of my, it's part of the guidance that I was given. So if you want to start from the beginning, the earth, mother earth is a living entity as we all know, and she is going through a natural evolution into a fifth dimensional consciousness, which means nothing more than love. It's her time to evolve. So her vibration needs to be high because she's, she's part of the universe. She is a living being. And so, yes, so because that's happening, the inhabitants of this plane have to raise their vibration to that frequency as well. Fifth dimension of consciousness. And so that being humans, and that's the love consciousness, which you see it, but it's gotten a little... A little off kilter we'll just say but it's this is not an exact science but it's perfect plan so when we before we come here we choose who we're going to be we choose our family we choose our brothers our sisters our our parents we choose the life lessons that we're going to undergo we choose the experiences we want to have we also choose when we go we choose our exit point and as far as i know there are more than one that people choose. You know, it's not just, okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 and I'm out of here. I'm gonna do this, this, and this. And if I feel that I've done enough, then okay, I got this exit point, I'm out. Or, oh no, I wanna go and do a little bit more. So then I can move on and then I got another one, you know. So we got these little, these little places put in between that if we if we decide we've had enough and we wanna go back, we check out. So when things happen, like, let's say, like the COVID, for me, COVID, whether it's used by the dark or not, it's still allowed by the light because there's free will down here. So they use it to their advantage on both sides. You know, a lot of people used it because the energies that are coming in are too much and they're not ready for that. 
or in Lauren's case, I believe it was just his way, his time that he had done his work here and he was okay with what he had accomplished here and he was tired. He was just flat out tired. And so this happened and it was time for him to go. That's what I believe. Now, don't take my word for it, but I, I believe everything happens for a reason, no coincidences. I don't believe that you can, I don't believe there is another living entity on this plane that can take someone else out per se. Not that they can't, you know, pray against you and, and this and that, but if your vibration's high, it's gonna bounce off or you're gonna be aware, but they can't just say, nobody controls that of a soul. Nothing is capable because we're still all light beings. We still all come from the light. Even the dark comes from the light. And so um, another thing we always say too, Lauren, myself is, you have the light and dark inside of you. Which animal do you wanna feed? That's it. It's your choice. It's always your choice. Don't allow people to make choices for you. You make your own choices because you're the sovereign being that everybody talks about. You know, we, we come up there, we choose exactly what happens. Now, not that there's those that can infringe upon it. You know, of course they can because it's free will, but you're always protected. So yeah, I don't believe the whole taking out. So for me and my brother, it was just his time. He had, he, he had enough, he did enough, and he needed to do, he needed to move on. He needed to move forward on his journey. So my belief with that is that he felt the situation at hand. It was easier, maybe better for him to work from the other side. So he chose to say, okay, I did what I needed to do here. Now I can do my work from the other side. And of course, then you can get around a lot more. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so we, all, we already know how he, he like to get around. So, so for <laughs> me, and it's the same, me and my brother are so much alike, even though from the outside, we look so much different. Because, you know, I'm a white boy born in northern Wisconsin. I got some native heritage behind me, but I never studied that. You know, it was more Christian for me. I meet this Indian chief, native chief. Uh, that has a total different background, total different, you know, uh, ethnic group, and we come together. So that's another part of it. We show that we're all one people. The color of his skin don't matter. It's what's in his heart, you know, that matters. And I kind of lost my train of thought just a little bit. I do that no, because, no. <laughs> but, 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 oh, shoot. Yeah, because I get going on a roll. So anyway, so he can do his, his work from the other side now, was, was my point. And, oh, that's what I was going to say. So, we you know, we've not only lived one lifetime, we've lived bunches of lifetimes. And there are those of us that have lived lifetimes in many other places in the universe. So for me, I found, you know, I resonate with, you know, Sirius and Orion and Lyran and Lemurian and all these other ones. And I'm like, okay, so I was trying to make sense of it. And I said, oh, I get it. And you have to pardon my French. And if, I mean, you know, I'm just going to say like this, I've felt like I was, I've done all this learning, taking all these classes and all these different places in the universe for eons. I call myself the spiritual whore, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so Lauren, the same way we've been brothers in many lifetimes doing many different things. Do I know excerpts from any of that? Not so much. It's more of a feeling, you know, it's just a knowing, knowing, feeling, you know, and to come together this lifetime and know that we're both doing the same work. So, you know, we get around. So like I said, he gets around a lot more now because he's not encompassed in this meat suit and he can, and he can further, but he'll do so much good. And I know he's going to start coming to me. It's not going to be right away. Cause apparently there's a transition period from here to there, but I've already felt it for like the last year. Um, that he's going to be, be whispering into my ear quite considerably. <laughs> and you're probably the only one other than Robin that knows that right now, because 
It's yeah. not something I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the dynamic. She, 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 she wants to ask a question. So yeah, so anyway, so speak. You know, you know, one of the things is, um, you mentioned last night that you had a feeling about mm. six to eight months ago before Sundance. Yes. He said something about the drum. Oh, when he told me about the drum. So when I was in, when I was, I had this feeling, I said, what's going on with Lauren? I felt some, some kind of a shift. And so it was very interesting when I went to Serpent Mound in March, I was like, seen him, he, he pulled up with Baritza and he was unloading his stuff. So I went up there to help him unload his stuff, to set it up in the building for in case it rained, he could record and this and that. So I was doing that. And so I got to, you know, hug my brother and tell him I loved him and, you know, have that little bit of time with him and then help him out. And then I went back doing my thing, what I do, walk around and spread love and shine light. And then he was, I was walking across past the drum and he was going to speak. And he said, hey, he said, and real quick, it was like seconds. He's like, go on the drum, take my spot. And so when he said that, something clicked in my head as like oh no because i had wondered you know six eight months a year ago i was like well what happens with lauren's teachings or the universal teachings when lauren is gone what are these people going to do and i'm like well you know they'll figure it out but when he said take my spot it was how he said it it hit me in my heart i was like oh all right so this is how we're gonna work together well, I didn't get that part of it until he got sick and he passed and I didn't get a chance to talk to him, but I didn't really need to talk to him because I feel, so I'm not sure exactly what's happening. I'm not going to take on the, the teachings of his 11, 11 or 12, 12, or, you know, I'm not taking on that, that I, that I'm aware of, but what I am taking is the baton from him to spread love as he would have done. And, and I've been doing that anyway, but now he's like the only one that I know of that has traveled around like this and has groups of people actually flock to hear him talk. So it's a great importance because you get all that energy in one spot. This is really only about assisting people and finding themselves and getting them back on track to be in a high vibrational state so they can ascend, so they can stay here on this planet, which I also said last night was we're pushing... They're pushing, sorry, they're pushing sorry. their light body. I, I'm sorry, I have a question. I'm sorry to interrupt, but why did Joe, knowing that Lauren was healing, why knowing, knowing he could leave, that there would be people like you and other people? Of course, he is a, an okay. entourage, but like certain people need to continue what he was talking about, um, he, he actually passed peacefully, and so... Oh. Hey, Robin, one second, okay, one second. All right, so anyway, yeah, that's a very good point she brings up. Um, who's going to carry it? Somebody, the, people still need to know his ways, but you know what? They already know the ways about it, so if that works into what I'm supposed to be doing, then that's what I'll do. But it's all about spreading love and shining light. You know, the, the, the thing about the chief that was so amazing for me is that he always made me feel like super connected. I felt yes. super connected to him. He made me feel like he got me on such deep, yes. multi-dimensional levels. And yes. when he would call me literally out of the blue sometimes when I'd be at the lowest point, and he would do crazy things. He'd just start playing the guitar. He'd yeah, show me a video. Exactly. Hey, come here, look at this. He'd, he'd tell me a joke. He, he'd go into one of his wandering stories and I never knew where it was gonna end. And it always had a punchline. And yes. it was exactly what I needed to hear at the time. It was exactly what I needed to hear at the time. Exactly, and, and it was simple, wasn't it simple? Yeah. Very, that's my point is, is that's what brought the people to him, but it really what it was about is his laughter, his joy, his making you feel like you were family and being family, you know, and always knew. No, right after I him down, he 
<laughs> anyway. <so. laughs> tell, her, tell her we'll do a Zoom call with her next, but right now we're talking to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I get it. I understand, but it's all good. So anyway, yeah, it's that's the simple part of it. And that's what I want to bring is because most people aren't ready for complicated and not that that's complicated, but to some people, they barely, they can barely handle being human. So if you speak to them or I don't want you to say, when you show them something that's very easy, that's very simple, which isn't really easy or simple because when you're controlling your emotions and you're staying high vibe and you live in this plane, it's very hard apparently to get into that fashion. So, so that's what I want to teach. Very, very simple. It's all about love. It's all about loving yourself, of course, first and being in touch with your human emotions and anything or anybody that doesn't resonate or is not of your highest good of your own soul's growth, you probably should clear them from your path because they have their own work to do. And if it's, if it's, uh, if it's interfering with your own personal work, then you need to, you need to like distance yourself from it. And that may sound kind of harsh, but at the end of the day, this is about our own personal journey, you know, and what, what helps us or assists us in moving forward. So, I mean, it's, there's, there's both ways to this, you know, Is there, I, at the core of um, his light work is self-love self-love yeah exactly self-love yeah self -love. so that was what so no matter what he did in the answer that that was the punchline mm -hmm. self-love and that's what we need because we have to love ourselves before we're anywhere capable of truly loving somebody else and it's really it's about loving one another but if you don't love yourself first then you really are not experiencing the true unconditional love i right. mean in a way, in a way, but you, yeah, you get it. It's self-love. You have to look out for yourself first is all I'm saying. Work on yourself, take care of your own thing because you came here for your own personal experience and growth. And then when you get to that point that you can spread that to the rest of humanity, those who are ready, then this is what happens and this is what you do. And you can't stop what's happening on this planet right now because it's happening. Mother Earth is not going to stop for no one. So you got one of two choices. Work on raising your vibration, which you've already chose, wh whichever way. You stay until it's time and then you go. And if you're here for the duration, which was also chosen, then you got work to do. And then you move forward because like I said, you can't stop the path of ascension. You can only be on one side or the other, and it's okay. Let, let, let me let me let me say this. So whatever you do and whatever happens, it's okay, you know, because we're learning, we're experiencing, we're controlling ourselves to move forward, and then we can do that together. But it's at the end of the day, that's really what it's about: us doing what we came here to do, and if we can do it together. Beautiful. If we have to be apart because of it, it's everything is okay. However it works is okay. Because that's how it's supposed to work. That's the beauty of the divine. There is no right. There is no wrong. There is no good. There is no bad. There's only learning or not and moving forward when it's time in divine time. And for everyone as an individual, that's different. The end result may be the same. But the individual path is going to be a little different. Yeah. So, and yes, Chief Lauren, my brother, was very good, very good at bringing up those moments and those phrases and real quick to shift the energy, you know, to give you that feeling of love and that sense of well-being. And, and so this is what we do. And we're really good at it. And if you can make somebody laugh, and be in joy, or excuse me, let me rephrase that. If you can do something that causes somebody to want to laugh and be happy and joyous, that's like a bonus. Because that's, that's what we're here for. That's what we're doing. Yeah, that's so. Yeah, that, and we love to laugh. That, that is so important. And I think that's why, like,
for me, he was like the cosmic clown. Oh yeah. Oh, tracking everybody oh. up. Ne never taking himself too seriously. No, ever. And, and never having a plan because I'd say, chief, when are you gonna be here? I don't no. know. What yeah. direction are you going? I don't know. Famous last words. Yeah. And Jenny Marks used to say that all the time when we were on the road and they were following us around. And so they would go to Chief. She said, I don't know, whenever we go. So then she stopped asking Lauren and she started asking me. I said, I don't know. I said, we, I said you know what Lauren's going to say? And I'm going to say the same thing because we move when we're, when spirit moves you, you'll go. Yeah, I never have a plan. He never had a plan. You know, we just kind of live... Well, it's divinely orchestrated. You listen to spirit and you move when you're supposed to, and you have to be very patient. So you might as well have some fun while you're doing it. Right. And you're never where you're not supposed to be ever. That's the beauty of my brother. I loved traveling with him because we're so much on the same, the same wavelength of everything. And, and it's like, wow, he's probably like one of the few people. He might even be the only one that, we think so much alike as far as them, them little bitty details of us. Yeah, make a plan. I tried making a plan. It don't work. It works way better just sitting there, even if you got to twiddle your thumbs or whatever, and then spirit will, will go. That's how I made it to Serpent Mound this last time. Do you, you know, when uh, the chief, when, when he was here, he would go to bed late and talk to the last person yeah. And, and make sure that each person felt uniquely special and had their time with him. And he'd wake up before everybody. He'd be up at like 4.15 or 4.30. And yeah. I said, how do you not have any sleep and then run an entire day? I mean, I don't know where he channeled his energy from, but he was a very early riser. Universal energy, which we are all tapped into, everybody gets the amount they can handle. But you don't use your personal energy. You open that channel for that divine energy. So that's what that's what he did. Same thing. The same thing I do. You and anybody's capable of this. That's the beauty. If you're in the right space, you you open that channel, and they will flow you with as much energy as you possibly can handle. And then you utilize that energy, and you it it, it emanates off your body comes out your mouth and your voice, comes off out your fingers. Like for me, I do hands-on. I do remote too, or I should say facilitate, but, but you're always using universal energy. They're working with you, your entourage of angels and guides and spirits and ancestors and ascended masters and whoever else, you know, for me too, dragons, probably him as well. Um, that's, where, that's where our energy comes from. It's the same energy we're made of. So that's how he could do it. He could do it because his, his, his channel was so open. His crown chakra was so open. They just kept like a beam, like a beam of light flowing through. And that's, that's how it works. You live on, you know, what Buddhism, they talk about prana. Uh -huh. That's what prana is. The universal life force energy that comes from creator source. The energy that our souls are made of. And of course, our physical even too. So yeah, that's how, that's how. And that's what kept him going for so long. And even at his end, I told you that his brother, I was, I was told that his brother Leo was there in spirit, holding his hand, blowing that energy for him until he decided what it is he wanted to do. I already kind of knew. And all I wished for or prayed for was that he was allowed to make his own decision without having to concern himself with who was trying to keep him or who didn't want to let him go or whatever. Let him make his own choice as a, as an individual soul. And he, he made it, but yeah, but that's why he had all that energy. He allowed, he allowed that flow of energy to go through him. And then he utilized it to move on about his day and I only know this because I seen it and I have the same connection like that. And they just blast you. If you, if you're ready and you allow it, do it. You know, he would always blast also too through channeling music. And so oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. Year, and the in 2020, he yes. put a video on my timeline where he's playing the lead guitar. He's playing the bass guitar. Oh. He's playing the piano. Yep. He's singing. 
He's yeah. writing music. He's he got the do green it all. Screen. He's got the green screen. He's yeah. editing. A he one man band. He he'd get me on the computer and he'd be like, Athena, Athena, this is how you do the green screen. This is how you cut a video. This is how. And I'm like, yeah. when do you have time to learn all of this stuff? Oh, so this because time. Channeling. So this time that you're talking about that it's in between movements is what he did. I went and seen him in Golden, Colorado. He's up on his computer fiddling around. Hey, check this out. Check this out. You have to also understand that he lived on this plane for, I think he was 67, 65, 67. So he also did a lot of teaching previous to his going on the road. You know, he's always been a teacher. He's always been in some form of giving knowledge. So he had plenty of time. All of his free time when he wasn't actually in ceremony, he was in his own ceremony, playing music. You know, he incorporated it so well, you know, his 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 uh, physical life to his spiritual life was perfectly balanced. So when he's doing ceremony, he was doing ceremony, but he was always taping and going through all that stuff. So the knowledge was coming his learning has happened over many years. So it's not like it happened overnight. So he utilized a lot of his free time to do stuff like that, which in a, in a roundabout way, he was still working. You know, he was always working. And that's what we do. We're always, that's another good point to make. We're always working. When you are a spiritual being and you're on this path, you're always, your work is never done. You know, you're always doing something if you, like like I, I was telling you also, so as Lauren and my, and maybe hopefully everybody else's, this isn't like a mindset or a practice or something that we do on the weekend or this and that. It's a way of life. You do it 24-7. So when you are in your heart and you're flowing this energy, no matter what you're doing, you're, you're, you are spreading love and shining light. And if you're having fun and you're doing things that you love and occupying your time with those things, you keep your vibration high because you're in peace and joy and bliss and harmony and all that good stuff. And that's what he enjoyed the most, playing the guitar. I always used to be like, dude, he can play every, he, he could, uh, he could play any instrument that I know of. So anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, he was very, very, very instrumentally focused. Talented. Talented, talented focused. Talented. And I'm not. I'm like the exact opposite of my brother. I was, I, I, I don't play any instrument. Maybe the recorder. But it was beautiful to listen to him because I would sing and he would play the guitar. He would do this. He would do that. And I was just like, wow. Yeah, where do you find the time? But, you know, like I say there again, he said it for years or he's done it for years. And it was just part of who he was. Very much a part of who he was. He, anytime that he was at an event, he would always have his guitar always. in between the speakers. Never. And he would always encourage people he'd always encourage people to come up and start singing. And before yes. you know it, there'd be like yep. a chief pile on and yeah. everybody would grab a chair or a speaker or yeah, an instrument. Right. I remember playing with him and they just would start. I mean, he just had this ability to magnetize. Yes, creative the energy. Love. It's the energy. The energy of love and that, that actually draws people to you. Draw. So if you stay in the high vibration, those who either are at that vibration or want to be at that vibration will show up. And yes, music. I remember every ceremony, end of end of the night, jam session. At end of each day, jam session. He'd be out there. I said, like, hey, one time he didn't have it out. I said, Lauren, really? I said, oh, yeah. I said, get the guitar out, man. Let's do it. He said, well, you're going to sing? I said, let's do it. We'd be at people's houses or we'd be at a venue. And he's, yeah. And then, like you say, everybody would show up with their instruments and what, yeah, whatever it be shaker, the what's that bong box, gang, that box thing. Uh -huh. I don't, yeah, uh -huh. that, yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, and yeah, that's that's how you bring people together. Your energy draws them in. So it's so important to utilize that energy for that. Yeah, he was a definite magnet, a star magnet. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, star magnet. Yeah. Uh, totally. So, yeah, he definitely so, we have people. So yesterday, okay. um, how did you find out? And when, you know, when we say the rainbow bridge, crossing the rainbow bridge, like, can you explain your concept of that? I can. So yesterday morning, I, I don't know if we went through this beginning, I felt this real heaviness in my solar plexus. And I wasn't sure where it was coming from. And then it, it like made me sick to my stomach, almost like very sick. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? And so I was like, all right, well, let me let me check posts on the Caring Bridge, which was an app that we put on our phone that his daughter, Nikki, was posting his uh, what well, you know his status and so i looked down there and said well you know he's still getting 75 percent oxygen this and that everything you know he had kind of a rough night how she put it was that he was all over the place in his dreams and in the hospital it's like you see his spirit was very uneasy this is what i got out of it so i'm like okay so that makes sense what i was feeling but it was a little more to it than that because around 2 30 central time in the afternoon, she posted that they decided to take out his breathing tube and they were going to let him transition. And I'm thinking, that's what I was feeling. So it wasn't, I don't know how many minutes after, but then she made a post and said he went home. So um, the Rainbow Bridge, I remember Reverend, I remember Reverend's talking about the Rainbow Bridge. We go, we get like sucked into this tube and she says, and then we get pushed out onto this bridge and then we're here. <laughs> There's something to that effect, she said. I was like, yeah, that's pretty well put. So, so for me, the Rainbow Bridge, I always think of uh, Thor, you know, where it's basically like you, you go through the bridge and then there's like this portal where it sucks you where you got to go. And so I never really think, I just, I just know for me that, that when our soul leaves our body, it may not be a straight shot, depending on what needs to happen. You, you still have a transitional period. I don't know. I can't tell you for sure. You go straight back to light, which makes the most sense to me. You go straight back into light. I don't know how the, the the details work per se. So people could make some stuff up, but I know once you leave your body, your soul's back up there anyway, in whatever capacity, and you're just back to creator source energy. So the rainbow bridge, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, maybe it's metaphorical. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's just a, a, a path. It's just a path. It's a path from here to there. And, and it's a crossing that you have to make in order to, to, to break from this plane to the next. So I really can't tell you my own perspective of how it works. I just know when you're done, you're done and you go back to creator source energy. And if you choose to hang out and become a guide or hang out in, in population, if you will, <laughs> and do your thing or become a guide, and come back, you know, there's, I'm sure there's many options. So I never really delved too much into that. Because for me, I want to keep the information simple. A lot of this stuff is cool to know. But really, it may re refocus your attention to something that really isn't in your now moment. Does that make sense? Because you know, you learn from the past, and that's all instilled in your soul. That comes with you over lifetimes. Your soul re retains all that information. Of course, you look toward the future, but I'm, I'm, I'm full well in belief that you need to always be in the now moment because this is where you're experiencing and your learning is going on. And so with Lauren, that's, that's what we did. That's what he did. He was always in the now moment, not looking at the next moment or, or, getting too much into the past moment, always in this moment. 
If you're in this moment, then you can hear and you pay attention to what's really going on. And then you're never faltered. So if you get too far into the future and stuck in the past, you're not here and you're missing shit that's supposed to be going on. Is that a problem? No. But does it deter you a little bit from moving forward? Maybe. But you will when it's time anyway. You'll learn maybe not to and always be in the now. So that was another one of the things that he really, he may have taught it, but I find that on this path, we're really good teachers if we lead by example, which is what he was really good at. Leading by example. Not so much telling you what you needed to do, but giving advice, of course. I do the same, we give advice. Where we think, hey, you know, maybe, maybe try this or maybe do this, but always make your own choice. Don't take my word for it. But to walk in such a way and the people see that, oh, look at this guy and look how this works and looks what's happening for him. And when they see that, I want to be like that. You know, not like him, but um, have that same joy, that same peace, that same calm, you know. And so this is what he was very, very good at for years, was leading by example. Jesus did the same thing. Buddha did the same thing. I do the same thing. Gandhi did the same thing. All them spiritual people, spiritual leaders, ascended masters, because we're actually all ascended masters, you know, in all reality, because we're masters up there. We come down here and we get like dumb <laughs> no, on purpose because they took all of our DNA away. They took all our DNA away from us. They said, here, you get third density. That's it. <laughs> now, now figure it out. Oh, but you chose to come here because like people, I would have never chose this stuff. Well, I'm so sorry, but you did. <laughs> you know, when I, when I think of the chief, I think yeah. of the word liberation because, yes. because he was so um, okay with the present moment, no matter what happened. Right. He was never disappointed in the now. Never, nope. never, never. Nope. And anytime, anytime you ever really wanted to like, you know, unlock yourself, get out of, uh, of whatever stuck thought form you were in. He had a way to explain to you why now was so great by being in it. In it, fully. exactly. That's the fully best thing. It. I can, I always tell people, and even Lauren knows this too. I can show you better than I can tell you. And that's what he right. did. He showed, that's what he did. showed people that same thing. That now moment, so important. And that's when you say, he's in this moment, maybe he's drinking tea, he's playing the guitar. What are we doing next? Well, shit, let me finish this moment first and then we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like patience. Patience is a virtue. You know? <laughs> yeah, so when you can, that's what the liberation is all about. When you can be that free that you don't have to clutter your existence with all these 3D things, which, hey, and we're a here. And we're a plan. Here. Like, yeah, and plan. a plan can clutter your now. Yes, always. Because you're thinking about what you got to do next. You're not thinking about what you're supposed to do now. <laughs> so right. I, that's, what I, that's the one thing I loved about my brother. Because me and him could sit at any place and just start talking about whatever. And then, so we're always in ceremony because we're always talking about good things or just regular things but we never hey wait man we we only got like 15 minutes to talk because we got to go do this no we didn't talk until we were done talking and then we was like okay let's go sweat you know <laughs> go from this moment to the next moment but enjoy the moment in front of you always and that's what he did as well that's what i do and it and works pretty good when 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 he'd go out to a restaurant he would strike up a conversation. He never met a stranger, no matter yes. who he's with. He's in the line. Yes. He's waiting. He finds yes. the exact funny thing to say yep. to the specific person that needed it, and then it would brighten their whole day. And it's that simple. Happens every day. Every day. Oh. And I guess that's why we worked so well together when we did, because we were so much alike that that same thing. We talked to anybody. Yeah, I never met a stranger. And you just start just start saying something, whether it doesn't even matter what comes out your mouth, because whatever's supposed to come out will come out. Yeah. And then people are laughing and they're like, 
or they're looking at you like, where'd this guy come from? You know, but not in a bad way. They were like, oh yeah, I needed to hear that. Or I needed to laugh or, yo, know, one of my, one of my sayings is, uh, when I ask people how they're doing, they say, I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I said, it's another day in paradise. My projection. And they look at me and some laugh. They're like, yeah, that's a, that's a good way to look at it. So that's how Lauren looked at it. He looked at life. Every moment was to be grateful for every moment. Every moment was a blessing. So enjoy that moment. Yes, he was very good at it. And there's, you know, there's those that don't resonate with that. And of course, and so you still stick to your guns. And that's, that's the other thing, no matter what happened, like you said, no, whatever, no matter what happened to him, whether it was something that, you know, ooh, he never judged it. He's like, you know what? I'm still going to be in my peace. I'm still going to be in my calm and the universe will work it out when they can. And I'll be over here playing my guitar or making jokes, you know, making people laugh or just being, just being. Yeah. He was one phenomenal soul. And I'm so grateful to have gotten to meet him and, and actually hang out with him and have the relationship that I have with him in this life. Cause he's definitely family. We're all family, but you know, there's those of us that we don't get to see each other, but it's like, it's like this. So even though we weren't always together, always around, we could pick up a conversation and I've seen him in a year. Like we just, like we never left, you know, like we were never apart. We're that connected. And he was connected like that to a lot of people. You know, I'm not, not going to single myself out, but from my own experience, but seeing him in that state is such a beautiful way to live. I mean, he definitely had it down. He had it figured out. And so my wish and my prayer is that all those people of the world that were around him and never got to meet him can walk in that same, that same path, that same way. Like I said, for me, it's a way of life. For Lauren, it was a way of life, you know, and he enjoyed every moment, even if, even if he wasn't enjoying the moment, he still, he projected that enjoyment because he wasn't going to let anything bring him down. He wasn't going to let anything ruin his peace and calm. Never seen it. I maybe got him one time, but <laughs> <laughs> we were in a car. <laughs> um. Well, I just want to thank you for taking this time to remember the chief. I love him oh. so much. I, I've, I've known him since before my daughter was born. It's been yep. a decade. And uh, I've read several of his books. I've shared <laughs> several of his lectures. I've had yep. him at my house several times. Yes, you have. And anytime I've ever been afraid or doubting who I was or feeling upset in any way, I would reach out and I would call the chief and within five minutes, he'd have me sitting right, yep. laughing yep. out loud Beautiful. and singing. Well, yes, that's very good. It's so to carry on my brother's tradition, I'm going to say our tradition because him and me are so much alike other than the headdress. Well, I carry my headdress, but what I want to say about my brother, Lauren, is that I will never miss him. And there's a reason why I'll never miss him because I will always remember him. He's always going to be in my heart. So he's never gone. Does that make sense? Yeah, because he's always, I feel him around me actually right now. And all he's doing in my ear is going, yeah, you go ugly girl. <laughs> Cause you know, he says, I'm like, we're the same. He says, you never shut up. He says, do you ever shut up? I said, mm, probably not. <laughs> so I always got something to say. But yeah, so he'll always be around me. He'll always be around all of us. You know, if we call on him, you call on him, anybody calls on him, he'll, he, you'll feel his presence. You know, he will always be here. So no need for missing him, only remembering him and the beautiful man that he was. Always. Yes, he's definitely, uh, I don't want to give him labels, but I'm just going to say he was a beautiful soul with a beautiful heart, and he had a pure intention while he was here, always. He gave so much, and, and I want to mention his brother Sherwin as well, Blue Star Eagle. Blue Star Eagle, yeah. Another one, 
them guys gave so much of themselves to the other people. I mean, and that's what we do. We, we, we kind of leave our mark on this plane. And it's not really for any other purpose than to show what you can accomplish in this life and how you can still stay in your heart and flow that love. So like a remembrance for all, but that's really where it's at. To be in your heart and just be spread that joy wherever you go. And so I'm definitely following the same path personally and honoring my brothers the whole time, you know, because I've met a lot of people and I'm going to tell you what, them two guys right there, definitely, uh, I, you know, I love everybody, but they definitely have a special place in my heart for sure. For sure. So grateful to have, have got that experience and that time within this lifetime. It's definitely very, very beautiful. And uh, so a new, a new age is coming and trust me, Lauren's not far. <laughs> He's not far at all. So I'm looking forward to messages from him and I'd say it might be a little bit, but he's always there anyway. He's be whispering in my ear. So yeah, he was a great man. I mean, there's really what more can you say? What could, I mean, he, he had so many accomplishments, so much that he gave, so much love that he spread, and knowledge that he offered to the people. And uh, yeah. I mean, I, I am so grateful for that and many blessings to him on his journey because his journey has really just moved into a different plane. You know, we, our souls never stop. They never stop because we'd get bored. So yeah, he's just doing it in a different fashion now. So kudos to that man for the beautiful life that he shared with everybody here. Well, I, I want to thank you so much for talking to me today. I feel like a lot better because he's over there, you know, in I hope South so. Dakota, and I'm here in California and it's still kind of COVID and there aren't any people to like light yeah. fire with and hug and cry yeah. and tell yeah. cheap stories. Yeah. And I, I was like, uh, I wanted to talk about the chief today. And yeah, no, that's beautiful. He's, he's, he's very happy about that, of course, because... That means that his purpose here, he accomplished something. He, he touched so many hearts. So yeah, so if you ever need to talk, I have your number now. I put you back in my phone. Um, I've had a new phone for like three years now. So anything previous was, I couldn't get off my other phone. You know, that's how it works. So I also know that those people that need to reconnect will, and I've kept the same number for over 15 years. So yeah, so if you ever need to talk, um, I'm here, I'm here uh, to give guidance, but just know that Lauren's also there too. Whenever you think about them, it's like all your other passed on relatives and this and that. If you think about them, they will show up. They will give you clues. They will give you that sense of peace. You will feel them and you're very intuitive and you're, you know, so you feel, you, you feel very well. So you'll know when he's there. And so call on him as well, but definitely, definitely call on me. Awesome. You know, no problem. Anybody else that, you know, I mean, because going back home, ending this is all a part of being here. So one way to get here, be born for the moment. And one way to leave reverences rainbow bridge. <laughs> you don't even have to buy a ticket. It's already prepaid. <laughs> as soon as you say, yeah, I want to, I want to validate, <laughs> can you validate my ticket? <laughs> That's it. So yeah, it's supposed to be, even though we've been taught different, it's supposed to be a celebration. We look at the, a person's past, their life, you know, we look at their life and what they have accomplished in this. And then we celebrate the fact that they went through what they needed to go through. And it was just time for them to go home and start a new journey. Or continue the continue the journey, I should say, you know, in whatever fashion it is. So yeah, so I'm very grateful that you would actually and honored that you would call me up and say, hey, let's talk about 
Lauren, the chief. I said, well, shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely honored. And it's so beautiful to see you again. You haven't changed a bit since the last time I seen you, except I think you lost the wings, uh, the fake wings. You still got the real ones. I, I have my feathers. I brought my, I, I brought this. Oh, yeah, yeah. She said, she said, I got the most of them. I can see your wings. <laughs> she said, don't be plucking your feathers out of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> I get it, but that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. And I'm so, yeah, I'm so glad that I got this chance to actually speak about my brother as well, because he was amazing. And like I say, but I have the memories and I cherish those memories for as long as I'm here until I get to go back and see him. So yes, it's pretty good, pretty good. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put um, a link at the bottom um, with your information. And I'm also gonna put the Chief's dream. I put uh -oh. it on my timeline today. He's got like a, a five or six minute clip where he talks oh, about. Oh, I sent that dream. to me. Yeah, I did because it's one of my favorite things that he says. And I'm gonna put that at the bottom so anybody watching this on YouTube, if okay. you just stumble across this and you haven't even met the Chief, you can, yeah, see, you can see how much love he has yes. and how profound he is with the light that he shares with his dream for mother earth yes so, thank you so much blessing thank you sister love you many blessings many blessings to you okay and you do you, you say you're going to put my link to my to my what yeah, text, text me text me your link so if people that know you that knew the chief when when you guys were traveling together they can reach out and also say okay, hi well to my website people. my website i'll send you just text it to me and I'll put it in. I will. Box. Yep, got you. Okay, so beautiful sister. Send my love to reverence as well, please. Aw, I will. Yeah. I will. Oh, yeah, that's my little buddy. Come on. <laughs> All right. You have a beautiful day. All right. I love, love you. you so much. Love you so okay. much. We love you, Chief. We love you, Chief. We love you, Chief. Love you, Chief. Everywhere. Yes. Yay. All right. Bye. Bye.